Everyone remembers the 1993 Motorcycle Grand Prix season, right? Who could forget Schwantz's definitive title with Suzuki and subsequent retirement? Or Duin's fight back from a nearly career-ending injury? Or, of course, the actual career-ending accident of Wayne Rainey? It was a fantastic season of racing, without a doubt. But what if I told you that 1993 had a more exciting season of racing on offer? More than the 500s, the 1993 250 season, rebranded as GP2 for that year, was one of the single most exciting seasons of motorcycle racing ever to grace our living room TVs. 93 had all the makings of a Hollywood movie. Newcomers fighting with the old guard, multiple manufacturers with competitive bikes, tragedy in the paddock, and a title fight that would go down to the wire. So join me as I recap the truly incredible 250 season of 1993. Three represented a fresh start for the 250 class in many ways. Rebranded as GP2 by new owners Dorna, the middleweight class was freshened up by a series of big developments. As far as riders were concerned, Luca Cataloro, winner of both the 91 and 92 championships, had stepped up to 500s, leaving a vacuum that was just waiting to be filled. But who would be the one to step up to the plate? Could it be Max Biaggi? The fiery Italian had a stellar rookie season in 92, taking five podiums, one win, and four pole positions. A noticeably goatee-less Biaggi certainly seemed primed to step up and fill the void left behind by Catalora. Fellow Italian Loris Caparossi was also on the radar, having dominated the field on his way to two successive 125 titles. His debut season in the 250s was less than stellar, finishing 12th on the final count, but it seemed likely that Caparossi could capitalize on his year of experience and hopefully bring back a bit of that brilliance that had seen him stomp the lightweight field. A bit of an unknown quantity on the world stage, Japanese rider Tetsuya Harada entered the field with a renewed Yamaha factory effort. Harada had been at the sharp end of the All Japan Road Race Championship for several years prior, winning titles in 88 and 92. He had also raced as a wild card in the Japanese GP for the previous three years, showing some solid, if not terribly impressive results. Without spending the entire video going down the full entry list, know that the competition was fierce. 1990 250cc champion and all-around mad lad John Kaczynski was back on the 250 grid after a stint on 500s, as was the father of the 2011 Moto2 champion, Helmut Bradl. The field also has some interesting ties to the present paddock, as both current HRC manager Alberto Puj and Patronus Yamaha manager Wilco Zielenberg were both on the 250 grid in 93. The regular roster of manufacturers was seeing some big shakeups as well. Yamaha returned to the 250 class in earnest, replacing their aging YZR 250 with a new bike, the TZR 250M. Supposedly a modified version of their TZR 250 street bike, but obviously with full factory support. Honda's all new NSR 250 was rumored to have a new air intake and a massive top speed advantage over the competition. The bike also featured an incredibly sexy single sided swing arm a feature usually seen only on endurance machines. Honda was confident, there to show off. Suzuki also fielded a full factory team with their improved RGV 250, and Aprilia continued their focus on the light and middleweight classes with a renewed RSV 250 that had a bit of a question mark hanging over it at the start of the season, as Aprilia missed preseason testing. Traveling Circus rolled up to Eastern Creek Raceway, now known as Sydney Motorsport Park, ready for another season of racing. It was clear from qualifying that the field was tighter than ever, with the pint-sized Italian Loris Caparossi finding himself starting in pole position, ahead of Biaggi by only two thousandths of a second. Harada and Kuczynski made up the rest of the front row with a clear trend of Honda domination. The highest placed Aprilia was Zeelenberg in 8th, lending credence to the idea that the 93 RSV probably could have used a bit more time in the oven. With the top 10 all covered by less than a second, it was time to go racing. The front row all get off to a flying start with the exception of Kaczynski, who finds himself dropping places from the off. A bizarre turn of events into the first corner as Volker Barr attempts an aggressive pass up the inside 
and somehow gets his motorcycle stuck onto another competitor's bike. Like some sort of bad slapstick routine, a gaggle of marshals run over to try to detach the two motorcycles, only to knock over the other rider still on his bike. Anyway, back to the front. Caparossi takes an early lead ahead of Carlos Cardu, who got a fantastic start from 8th on the grid. Sadly, Cardu and others slowly fall away as Biaggi and Harada attempt to make up ground they lost to Caparex at the start. Biaggi musters all the might of his Kanemoto Honda and passes Caparossi on the straight, taking the lead for the first time. Kaczynski also begins cutting his way back through the field after his miserable start, quickly turning the leading pack into a four-way dogfight. The top four riders stay roughly in the same order, all the way until lap 11 when Caparossi pulls up beside Biaggi through the first turn and makes a go to pass around the outside into the second left-hander. Biaggi is forced to stand his bike up a bit, which has a domino effect on the two riders behind. Biaggi gets beaten up in the same spot a lap later by Harada, who makes a fantastic pass around the outside and takes Biaggi for second. Caparossi is back at the front, but he doesn't seem comfortable. His bike is jittering all over the place, he's sending his front wheel skyward, and it's just that sort of mistake that allows Harada to get into the lead for the first time. Despite this being his debut race in the World Grand Prix, Harada seems comfortable leading at the front. That is until he too falls prey to the rider's favorite passing spot, the tight turn two. Harada gets sandwiched either side of Caparossi and Kaczynski, as he loses two spots in the span of only a single turn. By half race distance, Kaczynski had taken the lead and was starting to put a bit of daylight between himself and his competitors. But he was certainly helped along by this incident, in which Harada, attempting a pass on Caparossi, makes contact with Caparossi's rear wheel and almost loses the bike, sending him all the way back to fifth place behind Romboni. <laughs> Harada pushes his way back past Romboni, but the next major incident of the race comes courtesy of Caparossi. Pushing to get his lead back from Kaczynski, Caparossi loses the front on the back end of the circuit and goes straight into the gravel. Kaczynski's now got a gap a mile wide over Biaggi in second, with Harada going from fourth to third on account of Caparossi's accident. With only eight laps to go and a big gap to Kaczynski in the front, Harada starts pushing, setting fastest lap after fastest lap as he works to make up the gap. He passes Biaggi and pushes onward. On the same lap that Harada passes Biaggi, he sets a blistering pace, gaining almost a full second on Kaczynski. Harada sets another fastest lap on lap 21, and passes Kaczynski on the main straight going into lap 22. He seems cool in the lead, but that lead is short-lived as Kaczynski takes him back in exactly the same place one lap later. As the laps count down, it seems like Kaczynski has Harada's number. Harada has a look or two up the inside, but never really fully commits to a move. The final lap arrives and Harada is as close as ever, but his passing opportunities disappear one by one as the two go through the final curves in sync. I'll let you listen to the Japanese commentary for a second here. Even if you don't speak Japanese, I'm sure you'll get the message. <laughs> It's a dream debut win for Tetsuya Harada and Yamaha's new TZR 250, with Kaczynski coming home second by a whisker and Biaggi a slightly distant third. 
In post-race interviews, Hirata says that he wanted to get past his American rival sooner, but Kaczynski definitely had him in the corners. He compliments the power of the new Yamaha engine, and also says how he thinks the potential of the new bike is very high. Kaczynski, on the other hand, is fairly gracious in his loss and says he's happy with the result, but the disappointment on his face is clear to see. We're pumped. This is the first race, and hey, we're second today. And and uh, you know, we never, nobody ever said it was going to be easy. And uh, you know, it's it's a tough battle, but we're trying. The championship standings mirror the results of the race, with Harada on top, Kaczynski second, and Biaggi coming home third. Caparossi, for all of his pace, left Australia with nothing to show for it. Make sure to join me next week when we'll be recapping the two Asian rounds of 1993, Malaysia and Japan. See you then!